Hi, Matt McAleer, Director of Equity Strategies, Cumberland Advisors, November 4th, just before the close today. In terms of this week, again, plenty of volatility in the equity market, had the Fed meeting. Moose will cover some of the details on that meeting and what it meant to the, both the fixed income market, commodity markets, and equity markets in a little bit. In terms of what we saw on the equity side, really a continuation of what the, the rule has been the last six months, and that's value over growth. Growth struggled this week. Makes sense, right? Growth tends to be kind of a long duration asset. Needs the wind at its back in terms of hitting growth goals for earnings. With rates being jacked up, that's going to continue to, you know, at least dampen that outlook. But real, real strength, again, in energy and healthcare and utilities, uh, a bid there throughout. Today, some interesting news. Speaking of uh, strength, you had, I don't want to call it a rumor, but you had talk overnight out of China that China may relax some of their COVID restrictions. Keep in mind, they've had a very strict policy in China, and it's dampened some of the industrial metals, some of Asia, any trading partner, Australia. Uh, so what we saw today was a real rip higher in China overnight. It carried over, obviously, into the U.S. market. We saw some of our, our metals and mining holdings really spike today over in our tactical account, uh, XME, up you know, was 7 7.5% intraday. As I mentioned two weeks ago, we had just added the gold miners and the silver miners, and it was a valuation call to the U.S. ETF portfolio that David's the lead portfolio manager on. Just added it two weeks ago. At one point today, uh, the gold miners were up 10%. So they're, they're going to finish the day off somewhere in that 8% range. Real nice spike and really traces itself right to that China news. We've seen this a couple of times throughout the year. So difficult to get overly excited. We try not to get too high, too low. If China is going to start to ease restrictions there, may see more of a bid throughout the Asia holdings. Last week, I said we'd spend a few minutes today on international equities. We really haven't covered them too much recently. As poor as the U.S. market has been in the broad indices, international has been even weaker this year. If we look at ACWX, which is All Country World Index X US, they're down today probably 24% year to date versus the S&P in that, you know, 18, 19% area. But again, did see a spike today. I want to bring up a chart just to look at the broad indices we follow. And that's the EFA, which is the developed markets, primarily Europe and Japan. EEM is the ETF we track for emerging markets. And then FM, which is the frontier markets. You can see over the last 30 days, you've really had outperformance from the developed markets. You know, Europe had been hit so hard early that you've gotten a little bit in there, perhaps investors and traders really just looking for some value. We were talking on our, on our equity call earlier this week that if you look at uh, the broad European market, let's, let's, let's pull out a ETF, the, the Vanguard Europe ETF. As poorly as it's performed, when you start digging the basket of equities in there, trading at about six times trailing earnings. That's a, that's a, a low multiple unless things are going to continue to disintegrate there. On top of that, you're talking about a four plus, four and a half percent dividend yield. So there is some value there if, if those markets can stabilize. So in terms of where we're putting money, right now we're in international, we're a little we're overweight developed versus emerging. And primarily in the uh, developed area, 
We've been in Europe and we've been in Canada, which is until recently hung in there very well. Over on the emerging market side, we're really split. We've had outstanding performance out of our Latin America holdings. That's Mexico, Brazil in the form of uh, EWW and ILF, two securities we own. Where we have been hurt is in China. X today, of course, which is a quite a rip higher. But we had traded China, I think, very nicely last year, had ridden it up, taken it off the table as it got hit this year and was knocked down 25, 26, 28, 30 percent. We started to nibble. So we do have a position in China. It had continued to fall and then started to really rally in the last 48 hours. We'll see if that adds a little bit of footing to the Asian markets and really maybe some overflow into the rest of the international markets. So that's some quick coverage. We'll try to get back to international more often. Sometimes we focus so much domestically that I pay it too short shrift. We'll try to work that in at least a monthly basis. So let's toss it over to John Mousseau, who filmed his portion of the fixed income markets earlier today. Hi, it's John Mousseau. I'm the CEO and Director of Fixed Income at Cumberland Advisors. It is Friday afternoon, early afternoon on November 4th. We're doing this a little bit early today for the update on bonds as uh, I'm going to New York to watch my daughter run the marathon this weekend. Um, this week, a little different week than last week when we saw Treasury yields down and the municipal yields up, just the reverse this week. Saw the 10-year Treasury up about 15 basis points, 30-year Treasury up about 15 basis points to about a 417 and 424 respectively. We saw muni yields down five or six basis points. Why? Starting to get more and more demand for those 5% tax-free bond yields that we're starting to see out in the longer end. Very good demand there. Short-term, two-year Treasury, up a lot, about 23 ticks, 24 basis points, up all the way up to closing in on a 470. What's going on? And there was a lot going on this week, for sure. We had the Fed meeting on Wednesday, and it was really uh, almost fake left go right. The language was, hey, we're going to consider all of the cumulative rate hikes we have done in considering future rate hikes. That was the language when they raised 75 basis points on Fed funds. The reality was that Jay Powell, chairman of the Fed, during his press conference, left nothing to the imagination in terms of he was out to slay inflation. In other words, we have plenty of work ahead of us, that the risks are that we don't do enough, and that doing too little is a, is a big risk. Um, so from that standpoint, the markets took it on the chin that day. After having stocks up and bonds up early, they both turned around and tumbled. But that's not the only thing going on this week. Today we had the jobs number, jobs stronger than expected. 193 was the number, 261,000 was the actual number. So it does send the message that the economy is doing all right. However, unemployment ticked up from 3.5 to 3.7. Some of that is just built into the fact that the labor participation rate declined somewhat, less people looking for jobs. So next week, we have the election. That's on Tuesday, and we have CPI on Wednesday. Both big deals as well. So this is a time period where we're basically on patrol every day. Uh, the election next week, if you end up with a split election, and by that I mean you come out of it with a change in one of the houses of Congress, either the House most likely going Republican, or the Senate kind of a toss up at this point. But if one of them changes, you have mixed government. And the history of mixed government, as opposed to everybody on the same side, is that bonds tend to do a little better. We'll watch that. And some of that is just on perceptions that if everybody's on the same side, you can kind of spend unhindered. And if there's a mix up, it takes away a little bit of the agreement and things move a little slower and things don't get passed quite as easily. So we'll see what happens next week. Certainly the CPI number is very important because that is the driver. We know that inflation's high. We know the Fed is out to fight it. 
And we do know that in the background, we see things slowing down. You all see the same headlines, tech companies starting to lay off workers, some places on Wall Street starting to lay off workers. Um, it is not a tsunami by any stretch, but it is certainly not ex unexpected given the turmoil we've been through. We hope everybody has a great week, and we can't stress enough that we want everybody to go out and vote next week. Thanks, and have a great weekend. Thanks, John. Additionally, I'd like you to take a look at a video we sent out on Thursday introducing David Burson to the firm. David's going to be our chief U.S. economist, He's going to help us link markets to the economy. He has a long career as an economist, and we're thrilled to have him. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so you can follow along with all of our weekly videos. Enjoy the weekend.